So by now, unless you're living under a rock, then I'm sure you've heard about Donald Trump's epic interview with Jonathan Swan on Axios. It's about 35 minutes long. It was posted to HBO's YouTube channel. And I've got to say, this was thoroughly entertaining. I didn't watch it like directly. I kind of had it on in the background while I was playing Ghost of Tsushima. Great game, by the way. Um, and there were moments where I paused the game like mid battle because I had to like go back and listen to what Trump said again because what he said was so stupid. And like the things that he said, they ranged from being hysterical, like genuinely funny to downright disturbing where I was angry. So, I mean, in this interview, you're taken on a ride, right? You go through all the range of emotions at one moment. You'll be pissed. The next moment, he'll say something stupid and then you'll laugh. Uh, I've got to give credit to Jonathan Swan because he did a phenomenal job at pushing back on Donald Trump. And honestly, from a journalistic standpoint, this is one of the best interviews I think I've ever seen. He really did a good job at bringing statistics, at challenging Donald Trump. He didn't let Trump get by on anything. But at the same time, like he didn't he didn't come off as overly combative. Like He tried to give Trump credit where it was due, but he also called out the lies. Um, and it really w was a fantastic interview. So if you haven't seen the interview, I would encourage you to stop watching this video, watch the entire thing. It's long, I get it, but it's worth it. Um, I mean, it's so long you could have it on in the background, but I swear to God, every time I turned around and like stopped playing the game to look at what Donald Trump had said, his hands were like that, like the entire time. So, you know, whenever he's doing this, he's like really struggling to uh, collect his thoughts and um, he's like really concentrating. Uh, the interview was banana. So we're going to start off, you know, um, on a lighter note because I want to definitely talk through these highlights here. So contrary to popular belief, according to Donald Trump, he does in fact read. Um, so he was asked by Jonathan Swan whether or not he reads his daily briefings. Um, his answer here was, um, it was, <laughs> it was weird. Like, <laughs> I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna give you any more setup. Just watch. I read a lot. They like to say I don't read. I read a lot. Uh, you read your I, daily I comprehend extraordinarily well, uh, probably better than anybody that you've interviewed in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Who says that? Uh, I comprehend extraordinarily well, uh, probably better than anybody you've ever interviewed in a long time. Who says things like that? <laughs> Donald Trump is such a weird person. Like, I, I don't... <laughs> like, I swear to God, if reptilians were actually a thing, Donald Trump is definitely a reptilian who's like still trying to learn the ins and outs of like humanity and how they function and the things that they say. Because I mean, like a normal, well-adjusted human being doesn't say something like that. Like what a weird hyperbolic statement to make. Oh, um, no, I actually do read and I comprehend it better than anyone you've ever interviewed. I mean, that's so strange. Like way to, way to suck himself off. Uh, the next thing that I want to go over is what he said when he was asked about the late John Lewis, civil rights icon, uh, because, of course, he found a way to make John Lewis's legacy about himself, because why wouldn't he? John Lewis is lying in state in the U.S. Capitol. How do you think history will remember John Lewis? I don't know. I really don't know. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know John Lewis. Uh, he chose not to come to my uh, uh, inauguration. I mean, that's exactly what you'd expect from him. Additionally, he had this piping hot take. I did more for the black community than anybody with the possible exception of Abraham Lincoln. Whether you like it or not, people say, oh, that's you really you, you believe you did more than Lyndon Johnson who passed the Civil I Rights Act? I think I Act. did, yeah. How? Because I How got criminal did justice you do? reform done. I got prison reform. Lyndon Johnson. I've done things. I've done, well... He passed the ask, Civil Rights ask, Act. How has it worked out? If you take a look at what Lyndon Johnson did. You think the Civil Rights Act was a mistake? Out? That's a big yikes from me. Big yikes. Goddamn. Um, he's confident. <laughs> <laughs> he's such a dumbass. Um, okay, so those were, I think, the most funny parts in the interview. I think that Jonathan Swan himself deserves credit for being... Um, funny because he was clearly animated. Like you can read what he was feeling on his face. And, uh, like whenever I was like watching him, like as I was going through trying to prep for the segment, like I'm scrolling through and you can see like Jonathan's facial reactions and he's clearly like 
just puzzled by things that Donald Trump said. Uh, so moving on, that was kind of the more lighthearted, entertaining aspects of the interview. But there are some elements of the interview where uh, it was downright disturbing that the president said this. Like some of what he says, he can get away with it because it's funny and he's just a stupid person. Uh, but things like this where um, it comes to COVID-19 uh, and the deaths that it's caused, he inadvertently revealed his callousness and this is where the interview, you know, it takes a turn for the uh, disturbing. And it, this is where I got pissed off. You know, I've covered you for a long time. I've, I've gone to your rallies. I've talked to your people. They love you. They listen to you. They listen to every word you say. They hang on your every word. They don't listen to me or the media or Fauci. They think we're fake news. They want to get their advice from you. And so when they hear you say everything's under control, don't worry about wearing masks. I mean, these are people, many of them are older people, What's Mr. President. What's your definition of control? Yeah. Under the it's giving them a false sense right of security. Now, I think it's under control. I'll tell you what. How? A thousand Americans are dying a day. They are dying. That's true. And you ha it is what it is. But that doesn't mean we aren't doing everything we can. It is what it is. That's literally what he said about people dying, Americans dying under his watch due to COVID-19. I mean, he is revealing his callousness he genuinely doesn't care that people are dying and you know that he doesn't care because he's trying to reopen schools if he was actually concerned with the health and well-being and the safety of americans he wouldn't be urging them to reopen schools he wouldn't be using this pandemic to privatize public education but i mean he is he's ruthless he does not care about human beings which is why you'd say something like that it is what it is in response to the deaths with regard to covid 19. now jonathan swan pressed him on the deaths a little bit more and trump tried to debunk the facts that jonathan was bringing to his attention and he was uh fumbling through these papers to try to show him statistics this was bizarre um but watch what donald trump is trying to do basically he's trying to present skewed information select statistics that make him not look as bad but jonathan swan was not having it he was calling him out on everything with actual data the figure I look at is death, and death is going up now, okay, no, and it's no. a thousand a day. If you look at death... Yeah, it's going up look. again. Let's look. Daily death. Take a look at some of these charts. I'd okay? love to. We're going to look. Let's look. And if you look at death... Yeah, per, it started to go up again. One. Well, right here, the United States is lowest in numerous categories. Uh, we're lower than the world. Lower than We're the lower world. than what is that? Europe. Take in what? Look. In what? Take a look. Right here. Here's case death. Oh, you're doing death as a proportion of cases. I'm talking about death as a proportion of population. That's where the U.S. is really uh, bad. Well, well, Much worse than South Korea, Germany, etc. You can't. You can't do that. You have Why to go. Can't I do that? You have to go by. You have to go by where. Look. Here is the United States. You have to go by the cases. The cases. Why are not death. as a proportion when of population? When we have somebody. What it says is when you have somebody that yeah. has it, where there's a case, oh, okay. the people that live sure. from oh. those cases. It's surely a relevant statistic to say if the U.S. has X population and X percentage of death of that population no, versus South Korea. No, because you have to Korea. go by the cases. Well, look at South Korea, if, for example. 51 million population, 300 deaths. It's like, it's you, crazy you compared to know that. I do. It's you on the, don't know that. Don't, you think they're faking their statistics? Uh, South Korea? I, I an won't advanced get into country? that because they have a very good relationship yeah. with the country. But you don't know that. And they have spikes. Look, here's Germany, one. Germany, low, 9,000. Here's one right here. United States. You take anyway. the number of cases. Okay. Now look, we're last. Meaning we're first. Last? I don't know we what we're first best. in. As a well, take a look. Okay. Again, it's cases. Just, okay. Um, and we have cases. Because I mean, of the testing. Wait, a thousand wait. Americans are dying a day, but I understand. I understand on cases, it's different. No, but you're not reporting it correctly, Jonathan. I think I am, but... If you take a look at this other chart, okay. look, this is our testing, I believe. This is the testing, yeah. Yeah, we do more tests. No, wait a minute. Well, don't we get credit for that? And because we do more tests, we have more cases. In other words, we test more, we have... But, now, take a look. The top one, that's a good thing, not a bad thing. The, the top, Jonathan. If, 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 if hospital rates were going down and deaths were going down, I'd say terrific. You deserve to be praised for well, testing, they but even, they're all going you know, up. They very rarely 60,000 Americans are in hospital. If you watch the news or dying read the papers, they usually talk about new cases, new cases, new cases. I'm talking about death. Well, you look it's at going death. Up. Death is way down from where it was. It's, it's a thousand death. a day. It was two and a half thousand. It went down to 500. Now it's going up death. again. 
excuse me, where it was is much higher than where it is right now. Went down and it went spiked, up again. But now it's going down again. It's, it's going, going down in Arizona. It's going down in Florida. Nationally it's going, going down up. in Texas. Take a look at this. These are the tests. It's going down in Florida? Yeah, it's going. It leveled out and it's going down. That's my report as of yesterday. Completely unhinged. Um, now, unsurprisingly, he once again repeated the lie that the reason why we're seeing an increase in cases is because we're doing more testing, completely disregarding the positivity rate. And on top of that, he wants you to only look at a specific metric when it comes to deaths. He wants you to look at the proportion of deaths compared to the amount of cases. So what is the fatality rate among people who have COVID-19. Now ask yourself, why does he want us to look at this specifically? Well, let's simplify it. So let's say 100 people got COVID-19 and 10 people died. Uh, what would the fatality rate be in that instance? It'd be 10%, obviously, right? So let's say that uh, cases went up. There were 1,000 cases and 100 people died. Well, in that instance, the fatality rate would remain the same. It's at 10%. So if the fatality rate remains the same, or preferably it goes down, that makes Donald Trump look better. But specifically, looking at that metric ignores the fact that deaths overall are increasing. It ignores the fact that in that hypothetical, we went from 10 deaths to 100 deaths, even if the fatality rate among people who have COVID-19 remained the same. So that's why... He told Jonathan Swan, oh, you can't look at that. You're not reporting that correctly. Because when you look at overall deaths based on population, it makes him look bad. Now, as Jonathan Swan conceded, like you can look at, you know, the fatality rate, of course. Like we're, we're looking at all metrics. We're not trying to hide information and data. That's what Trump is doing. But he's selectively trying to select data that makes him look better. And it's insane. And thankfully, for the first time, he was actually called out to his face for lying. Now, moving on, he was asked about the Afghanistan war. And Jonathan Swan called him out and, you know, basically pressed him to explain why if you campaign as an anti-war politician back in 2016, why are we still in Afghanistan? Uh, the answer here was uh, really telling because Trump, he was backed into a corner and he didn't know what to say because he clearly looked like a fraud. You, the US troop level in Afghanistan right now is roughly the same as it was no, when you- No, you're wrong, uh, no. Mr. President, we, I'm sorry. We have to do- Okay, are you ready? No, no, we'll I- We'll be down in a very short, it's already planned. Well, well that's, the, that's a different let, let question. We'll be down in a very short period of time to 8,000. Then we're going to be down to 4,000. We're negotiating right now. We've been there for 19 years. Oh, no, no, 19 I know. 19 years. But, but if you just let me finish my we'll question. We'll be getting out. I understand. Look, the, when you came in, it was 8,800. You boosted to 14,000, and now you're back down to 8,500. We're, we're now... My uh, question we'll to you... We'll be at 4,000. I'll give when? you the exact... Very soon. Very soon. What will be the number... Very soon? 4,000? Very soon, yeah. Like how soon? soon? I don't want to tell you that. I don't want to tell it's you. It's big that. news. What is that? that is it's going down to 4,000, isn't it? No, I've always said. Well, what about, we're what about get, election day? We will get largely out. On election day, how many American troops will be in Afghanistan? Uh, probably anywhere from four to 5,000. That's almost as many as when you came into office. No, it's not. 8,000. We had, we had much in. more. We had a lot of people over there, too. 8,800. A lot of people. Troops. And we did a good job. We wiped out ISIS. Have you let thought about going down to let zero? Let me just tell you what you don't say. We took out in Syria, we took out ISIS. We 100% of the caliphate. So, I mean, are you getting us out of these never-ending wars or not? You campaigned as an anti-war libertarian-esque candidate back in 2016, and um, we're still not out of the wars. Almost four years later, you've been president. We're still there. So why isn't the number of troops in Afghanistan zero? Why are you still conducting illegal drone strikes in other countries? It's because Donald Trump is a fraud. Sometimes, you know, he'll use that libertarian-esque anti-war rhetoric, but then other times he sounds like a bloodthirsty, saber-rattling warmonger, because he is. So, I mean, the inconsistency there, he has to address it. And when he tries to address it, when someone asks him about this, he's clearly clueless. He doesn't know what to say. Now, another area where he's inconsistent is mail-in voting. And Jonathan Swan asked him, why are you railing against mail-in voting when... Your campaign is instructing Republican Party voters how to safely vote by mail. And Donald Trump here unraveled because, again, like when you are called out and confronted in this direct manner with facts, you have no idea what to do, especially if you're Donald Trump. So all he does usually is when confronted, uh, he just lies 
or he pivots to the great job that he's doing, or, you know, um, he, in this instance, he actually did try to defend himself by saying, well, I have to promote mail-in voting because I have no choice, but that defeats the purpose of his arguments against mail-in voting. Nonetheless, take a look, and uh, we'll come back and discuss this. So we have a new phenomena. It's called, called mail-in voting, where you send where new. a governor... It's well, been here since the Civil New, War. In terms of the kind of, do, uh, the kind of millions and millions of ballots, they've never done it'll be It'll be like bigger this year because of the pandemic. Bigger? Not bigger, massively bigger. Yeah, because of the so pandemic. So they're going to send tens of millions of ballots to California, all over the place. Who, who's going to get them? I have a friend who lives in Westchester County. They send applications, not ballots. His son passed away. He had a beautiful, wonderful son, young man, passed away seven years ago. He called me, he said, I just got a, I just got a ballot Probably for an my son, Robert. Probably he died not. seven years ago. Somebody got a ballot for a dog. Somebody got a ballot for something else. You got millions of ballots going. Nobody even knows where they're going. You look at some of the corruption having to do with universal mail-in voting. Absentee voting is okay. You have to apply. You have to go through a process. You have to apply Absentee for mail-in. Absentee voting it's the same is thing. good. Look, he, look okay, let's do concrete. Out, let's do concrete. Jonathan, they're sending out applications. Governors, download them millions of ballots. No, they're not. There it's is, applications. You can get there them off is the no way you can go through a mail-in vote without massive cheating. I honestly don't understand this topic with, with go you. Go ahead. The Republican Party has an extremely well-funded vote-by-mail program. Your campaign puts out emails telling people to vote by mail. Correct. Your daughter-in-law, Lara Trump, she did robocalls in California saying it's safe and secure, mail-in voting. L I, let me tell you. The Republican won. We have won. no choice. That was an all-mail-in race. Let me tell you. Are you ready? Yeah. We have no choice. Because right now we have, but we're, we have many court cases that we're waiting. We have one filed in Western Pennsylvania. We have many court cases where we're trying to end it. Well, you see, I don't like mail-in voting personally, but since we're doing mail-in voting anyway, then I have to instruct my Republican voters to vote by mail. Let them know how they can safely vote by mail from home. Except if you're maintaining that position, doesn't that undermine your entire argument? Because if mail-in voting is so insecure, makes us so vulnerable that the entire election will be the most fraudulent election in American history, according to him, then wouldn't it not matter? Like if mail-in voting is so bad and it's not going to matter, it's going to delegitimize the entire election, um, wouldn't that mean that according to you, using your own logic, that the votes that Republicans cast by mail isn't going to matter either? I mean, if there's so much fraud, what's stopping officials from just like throwing out all of those Republican Party ballots? I mean, if you use his logic, his position is all over the place. It's all over the place. He can't keep his lies straight. And I mean, it's because he knows that there's nothing wrong with vote by mail. He doesn't want vote by mail because if more people vote by mail, that means that turnout will likely be increased. And when turnout is high, what happens? Republicans lose elections because they count on suppressing enough votes to win. But at the end of the day, you just have to watch the interview for yourself to see. It truly was, you know, a spectacle. Uh, it was bananas. Donald Trump, honestly, like... It's going to take a lot of time for us to digest what happened when he was in office, like once he's out of office, because it's such a bizarre timeline that we're currently living through that you're not going to be able to fully like appreciate what's going on until after we're out of this weird era in American politics. Tremendous, 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 tremendous,